Our guest this weekend is none other than James Grant, the publisher of Grant's Interest Rate Observer and also the author of the current cover article in Time Magazine entitled The United States of Insolvency. But some critics, notably Paul Krugman, have weighed in against the article. And we even have Ben Bernanke, the former chairman of the Federal Reserve, telling us that the Fed could, in a worst case scenario, directly finance the Treasury. Well, we're not buying it, and neither is Jim Grant. So stay tuned for a great interview on his recent article in Time Magazine. So your current article in Time Magazine, The United States of Insolvency, Paul Krugman at the New York Times has weighed in uh, very briefly in his blog on your piece. He was a bit unkind here. Did you uh, have a chance to see what he said? Oh, yes. But, you know, no matter how nasty he gets, he'll never be as tall as I am. (laughs) When I read his blog and he talks about low interest rates creating a a good environment for deficit spending – I just wonder, in the minds of of a progressive like Mr. Krugman, do you think that the federal deficit is ever repaid? Do you think the Fed's balance sheet is ever shrunken? No, I, I, I think I think not. I think that they that uh, people like Paul Krugman regard the desire to reduce the debt, if not to pay it off. They regard the desire to restore the Fed's balance sheet to something like pre-2008 normalcy. They they would regard those things as ambitions of people who don't understand how the world really works. They they think that the debt is um, balanced, a helpful thing. They think that low interest rates are the invitation to incur more of it. They think that the Fed's balance sheet is um, is as large as it ought to be, and they observe in the measured rate of inflation that no one seems really to object to it, and that the burden of proof is on any who would have the Fed do less of what it has done. So I think that they are, uh, as apologists for the fiscal and monetary status quo, they are fat and happy and self-complacent, and as far as the numbers they look at, they are entirely, you know, they would be correct. The stock market is near a high and the measured rate of inflation is less than 2%. So what's wrong? I think that's the way they reason. Well, some of the criticism of your time article was not simply about uh, the United States government's ability to service its debt or its assets or its solvency. But there almost seems to be this tenor, and I wonder if this is trickling down from progressives uh, like Krugman, this tenor that it's it's somehow almost passe or cliched to be talking about the federal debt because it's this amorphous thing we've lived with for so long. And, and Ross Perot was clamoring about it in 1992, yet here we are in 2016. I just wonder if there is not an, a measure of fatigue in the general public to the to the extent the gen, general public play, pays attention. Yeah, well, um, uh, you know, the critics of the of the debt and of um, of the uh, of the post 1971 dollar um, have uh, been sounding off for many years, and they have come to seem we I should certainly include myself in that have come to seem like a Paul Revere without the British. You know, there's no, there's been the alarm, but where exactly is the um, is the menace? Um, you know, Vice President Dick Cheney came out uh, many years ago and said uh, uh, that um, the deficit has no, you know, no evident, obvious, or even as far as he was concerned, um, remote connection with the rate of interest, and he wondered what all the shouting was about. So, um, yes, I, I think that the, the critics of this Time article and of generally of the approach that I took in the Time piece um, regard uh, my approach to things not only as, as wrongheaded, but also as uh, uh, anachronistic and indeed as risible. Well, if the debt represents a backward-looking approach. This, What Lawrence Kotlikoff has been talking about in terms of the fiscal gap down the road, that is perhaps even more amorphous to people in, in terms of uh, expected future tax revenues and uh, expected future entitlement payments. Do you think yeah. that, do you think that this means that there's that because we can kick the can down the road, that there's not really a political solution to this, that the solution has to come from something unpleasant? Um, Yes, I do think that. I think that's also the case with respect to uh, uh, the uh, post-2007 uh, monetary operations of the Federal Reserve and other central banks. Uh, you know, the, um, this uh, almost breakneck pace at which uh, uh, what was once uh, 
not only kind of unthinkable, but also unimaginable, the, the pace at which heterodox monetary policy has entered the world of plain vanilla orthodoxy. Um, that, too, I think, must play out until there is an, an obvious uh, adverse consequence. So again, if, you know, the, if you if you if you just look at the at the basic vital signs of uh, of the composite American enterprise, look at the rate of unemployment, look at the measured rate of inflation, look at the stock market, look at mortgage rates, um, and if you look at those things with the eye someone of someone, for example, who was around in uh, in 1979 or 80 when Paul Volcker was just beginning his tenure at the Fed, you say we have arrived at the kingdom of heaven. I mean, inflation is negligible, at least as they measure it. Uh, rate of unemployment is, is at least uh, defensible. The stock market certainly is frothy, and um, and mortgage rates are uh, on sale. People, you know, it's, so it's 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 kind of okay, and people see that it's kind of okay, and they wonder, well, what exactly are these critics saying? Um, and I, I think that people who uh, have, have read the Austrian masters and who have penetrated a little bit deeper under the surface of things know full well that something is wrong and know full well that something is unsustainable. But uh, I think that the critics, uh, I'm, again, I'm talking about myself, must be patient and must bide their time and, and um, have arguments at hand when uh, things do go visibly wrong as opposed to prospectively wrong. You know, on, on Wall Street, if 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 you um, uh, if you stake out a point of view that you think is is substantially correct and is in tune with theory and fact and and with value, um, and everyone agrees with you, you are suspicious of your own reasoning because, as the man said, successful investing is about having everyone agree with you later. Um, so the the critic of these fiscal and monetary arrangements can take um, uh, some comfort in the fact that uh, the great and the good um, are as one in shouting him or her down. I do take some comfort in this. Um, you know, if, if Paul Krugman can come out and said, "God, what a, what a fabulous analysis in Time Magazine, so accessible, so down to earth, and the figures are just—you really can't argue with any of it." That would have been worrying. But the universal outcry from people who, uh, uh, with whom one would not care to spend much time in friendly you know, discussion about economic matters, the universal outcry against is is um, is kind of okay, right? So it's not exactly pleasant to read all of it, but it's 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 what you would want if you were a contrary-minded and forward-looking critic of contemporary arrangements. Well, when it comes to contrary-minded people. There's been almost a joke circulating for many, many years about Mr. Bernanke um, uh, concerning helicopter money. But as you lay out in your article in Grant's Interest Rate Observer, The Road to Confetti, you talk about this as, as not just a, a joke about Bernanke, but a, an actual concept called Money Finance Fiscal Program that he has forwarded as sort of a, a possibility uh, between the Fed and the U.S. Treasury. Can you just talk a little bit about this. Is this is this maybe a more honest way than the circuitous way that uh, the Federal Reserve currently uh, uh, monetizes federal debt? Would it be better in a, in a certain sense? Well, it was, it's as, as you suggest, it's more straightforward. One can say more honest. I mean, what the, what helicopter money means is, of course, not literally chucking the stuff out of hovering low hovering aircraft, but rather of journaling. Um, you know, kind of book entry or digital script um, into the uh, an imaginary Treasury Department checking account. So the Fed, instead of buying securities in the open market, instead of crediting um, uh, the selling banks with these digital dollars uh, and having the banks lend them into the market, uh, the, the the Fed would would cut out the middleman. And and just credit the the Treasury's account with with dollar bills, and there will be no uh, no addition to the public debt. It would just be creating this stuff out of the thinnest of air. And th yeah, there's a there's a there's a certain <laughs> there's a certain base appeal to this. Certainly, you know, it, in a way, it would, it, it kind of um, it reminds me a little bit of Vivian Kellum's proposition that uh, we ought to stop withholding um, uh, taxes at the 
at the employee level and, and hand, actually hand the full weekly paycheck to the employee and then take it back from his or her outstretched hand just to let that person know what has been done. And the um, and helicopter money would, would, would answer the, the same, uh, the same perhaps, uh, it would be as pleasing in its way because it would, it would show for all the world to see what is happening. As it is now, the, uh, the Fed's open market operations are obscured in a, in a kind of a haze of, uh, of, of magic and uh, of, uh, I don't know, of, of, of fairy dust. Well, one final question for you, though, is, <clears throat> so how did we become the radicals? In other words, I'm not sure that I can imagine Alan Greenspan calling for this, but Ben Bernanke, who's an esteemed person by all accounts and, and treated as a serious and sober person, is now seen as the voice of reason. I mean, this seems like a Hail Mary type proposition. It seems like something that mainstream people ought to be raising serious questions about. Well, I think I think it's it's exactly that. And it's not just Ben Bernanke, you know, the Council on Foreign Relations uh, has uh, has uh, advertised this idea and aired it uh, for discussion. As uh, you know, the Wall Street Journal uh, did the other day, Greg Ip, its economics column, columnist, laid out the the merits as well as some of the demerits of helicopter money on page two of the Wall Street Journal. This idea has has entered the mainstream, um, and again, it's it's the uh, it, to me, it, it's proof positive that radical monetary policy begets more and more radical monetary policy. And those who um, adhere to classical notions are marginalized as the wild-haired ones, whereas the exponents of never-before um, uh, proposed and in, indeed hitherto unimagined nostrums, well, I guess they were imagined, say, at the time of the French Revolution, but the 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 the, adhere, the, the, uh, the authors of these new schemes are are kind of the you know just uh, they they are the uh, the new mainstream, and you know this works until it doesn't work, and I've been around Wall Street a, a long time, and I, I again I, I I comfort myself with the recollection of of um, of how safe and sound and sane did these um, subprime mortgage structures seem in 2004 and 5 and 6 and into the most of 2007 so uh, anyway i i uh, uh, i uh, have resolved to uh, uh, try not to lose my mind and to retain my patience and a measure of good humor and to keep on uh, keep on keep on going <laughs> Well, that sounds like good advice for all of us. And on that note, Jim Grant of Grant's Interest Rate Observer at Grant's Pub is their Twitter feed. We thank you so much for your time and have a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen.